Hello and welcome to my desk. <laughs> well, have you ever seen a chunkier palette of watercolor? I mean, now you can only see it from the front, but what if I do like this? Oh my god, look how fat and chunky it is. <laughs> it is humongous. That is by far the biggest set I ever have had compared to there's only like 12 colors in here. And then there is this pull-out drawer down here that's really large. And it's very wide, so you can actually store a decent-sized brush in here. And it's like um, ribbed so that if you have pencils, they kind of just rest in those, uh, you know, slots in here. <laughs> and then you have, like, so that you your brush is, is stuck it won't fall out <laughs> it is I know I know it's a crazy set it's made in Germany of course I, I haven't used it a lot but I can feel that this um, deck white is it called in German but it, I think it's kind of a gouache thing is getting stiff and hard so I wanted to you know, just use <laughs> some of this uh, white gouache, like like opaque white, before it uh, totally dies up on me. When it dies up, I know that I can still slice up the tube and re-wet it because it's a water-soluble opaque white. But um, let me uh, figure out what we're gonna paint. I was just cleaning it up, this Pelican watercolor set, and noticed this on the end of it. I actually think that it must have come with a compartment also for water. <laughs> Talk about all in one case. So it is humongous. I decided on a Shibasaki tutorial, and I think he's, it's called Autumn Trees Path, or let me see. Yes, Autumn Trees Path. Oh, quite suitable for this month because autumn for sure has kicked in. Why not markers today because we are in October? Well, because <laughs> my hands my hands are so stiff. This one I can't bend. Like I can make almost a fist with this one, but not quite. Um, so I, I can't uh, open the, the lid to the markers. I tried yesterday also, same issue. So of course it's annoying. Uh, it it annoys me uh, like a PETA that I cannot work in my Inktober journal. <laughs> but um, I guess my Rigi Mortis is uh, setting in early, right? It sure feels like... Uh, yeah, like it's too. I'm, I, feel, I just think I'm, I'm too young to be suffering from Ricky Mortis. <laughs> now I have to figure out how to have my sketchbook so you can see things the best. What about like this? Um, Shibasaki got a YouTube channel and uh, he's sketching with a pencil, but. I think that I would like to sketch with this oil crayon because it's nice and fat and um, it won't uh, disturb my hand. You know, I don't have to have such a small grip. So I'm actually excited because uh, this oil pastel is going to repel and, uh, you know, repel the watercolor and act like a resist. So. It's going to be uh, fun to see how it's going to uh, affect the drawing. I think I better keep it like super loose and not um, worry about making a nice drawing. So I may go in with a lot of scratching and um, 
whatnot just to remove that pretty nice look of it so it becomes uh, more like like scratchy <laughs> Um, what else? There is like a fence on this uh, property. It's just going to be like a barn and then some autumn trees in the background. And then got the horizon line here sort of a straight line and a road yeah I think that's all I'm gonna need of course we've got some trees up here yeah it's gonna be fun to see how it ends up I want to dip in some water to these pans because they look so thirsty. Looks like one of those type of uh, pans, like a uh, cakes, is it called? Watercolor cakes that's a little bit chalky, but as far as I recall, Pelican watercolors are pretty transparent. Not a chalky, gouache, opaque watercolor. But still got the same, um, it's like the same animal as uh, cakes, watercolor cakes. So if you want like a light coat, you should use them with dry pans. But if you want like a saturated coat, you should definitely water them down first. Just for fun, I wanna, I wanna just quickly swatch them out because I haven't really used them for a while. So I just want to see how they are. Okay, good thing that I swatched them out. <laughs> I think I may have to eat my words. Um, they are actually pretty opaque. Almost reminds me of some sort of a gouache. Um, especially the Prussian, the black, the umber the sienna and a very muddy ochre look at look at the violet also this one is also pretty opaque yeah so um hmm. suddenly i have to investigate this because i have another pelican set and i thought it was completely the same content <laughs> hooray <laughs> I actually, uh, you know, I've used this, but I have not used this one so much. This one is like practically unused, only swatched, like I think. And uh, it's the same brand, Pelican and Pelican. So, um, yeah. Now I just want to swatch th these out, <laughs> just quickly. Or maybe I am totally just remembering this wrong. Yeah, I can't continue before I've solved this puzzle. Not every pan is exactly the same. Yeah, look. There is a huge difference between these two. The okra here is more like a raw sienna. Look how weak the burnt umber is. I may need to um, do like a 
<laughs> Look how bright the green is. Okay, that was actually uh, kind of surprising. I thought that these two brands were, you know, the exact same content in the pants. And just the shape of the pants were different, where this is a, a round cake. Oh, look how weak the black is. Okay, now I need to investigate. So I'm going to drop water on this. Let it sit. And then um, come back and give it one more swatch. So I am sure that I get like mass tone. Yeah, just a second. Okay, I swatched it to mass tone, dried it up. Um, neither of them are chalky or give like a, a residue to my fingers. So that's a good sign, but still I will say that <laughs> this palette right here is different. It acts more like watercolor and it uh, doesn't have like a streaky application like up here. And that's a lot of filler. Uh, remind me of gouache a little bit. Like, you know, like you can get those uh, pencil, not pencil, brush marks when you're working with gouache uh, but definitely this down here is more transparent yeah also a nicer ultramarine I think maybe they use that for the the forest green because it's 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 much more nicer than this one up here yeah okay <laughs> I'm still gonna work with this set up here because now I am I'm just interested, you know, like curious. That was kind of a detour. Let me just water it down a ton. See if I can get it to be I'm going to paint very sloppy today because I don't really uh, have a lot of strength in my hand. So it doesn't take much before I do a wrong move, you know, and then uh, I hurt. So uh, I'm going to paint like a, like a scared chicken today. <laughs> Oh, what a nice blue. If you add a little bit of the violet into the blue, you get like a really nice ultramarine. Like a very warm, but darker ultramarine. Very likable. Oh my god, look how sloppy I am. <laughs> like the granulation. Nice granulation on that ultramarine. Let's get some, uh, it's a very heavy palette. I must say, uh, <laughs> it's not like an outdoor sketching thing that you want to stand up and hold in your hand. I don't know how to have this stuff on the table because it's so big. Maybe like this. I'm 
personally. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. Yeah, I'm going for this uh, fresh green grass, but it is going to be an autumn painting. But I'm telling you, my lawn at this moment is looking so beautiful. Oh my god. Looks like um, I've been using fertilizer or something. <laughs> it's just a very fresh green and thick, you know, like thick grass. Let's get a little bit messier here. It will dry up lighter, so it may look like too much now. I'm not happy with this front up here. will help okay <laughs> I really like this uh, painting session because it's just so loose let's try that the uh, white deck white washy thing <coughs> oh, it's totally stiff in the tube so it may come out like one solid sausage oh it's tough for the fingers yeah it was like solid hopefully I can mix it out and get myself like a bright magenta So I was uh, waiting for Janet to stream today and she didn't, so I, I hope she's okay, you know, it's not really Monday if uh, I don't watch <laughs> and lurk Janet and Young. <laughs> okay, let's put some of the magenta in here, just to warm it up. On her previous stream, she was talking about crossword puzzles, asking if uh, anyone of us out there lurking, uh, watching, was making crossword puzzles. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I actually have a fabulous crossword puzzles experience that I wanted to share. <laughs> You know, when I was younger, um, like really younger, talking like 14, 15 or something like that, I loved to do the crossword puzzles that came with the local news newspaper. And it was uh, a semi-hard one to do. Like, it wasn't easy, but it, it was doable if you had, like, patience. And it was one of those crossword puzzles where you need to come back, you know, let it rest and then return to it. 
several times before you manage to solve it. So now I think you you know what what kind of level of uh, puzzle this it was. Anyway, uh, there was this uh, this guy that also uh, we were hanging out with. You know, I, I, I'm not saying I was a town boy, but I had a lot of friends that were like. Uh, more boys than girls um i wasn't that good at you know mingling with with girls so um i was hanging out with the with these uh these these guys and one of them he always had a bet going on you know like the kind of person who wanted to have other people to pay for his stuff so he would put up like uh, like bets like if if I can do this and you can't then you have to pay for my beverage or something you know you know the type okay <laughs> here comes the thing there was this Sunday where I spent the whole Sunday solving this full page puzzle from the news local newspaper right and it was really difficult, so uh, I was being stubborn and had it all puzzled out. Then, in the middle of the week, we are visiting this um, burger joint, and this dude, he's with us, and he says this stupid thing, because we're looking at the local newspaper just to kill in time, and then he's like, Oh, it's a crossword puzzle. Do you puzzle? I am so good at puzzling. And then he starts working himself up, talking himself up, like how awesome he is to puzzle, you know. And then it's on him, right? He's the one suggesting that we could have like a, while we're waiting on our burgers, we could have like a puzzle competition. And whoever solved most of the squares in the puzzle should pay for the other person's burger. And first I sounded like, oh, I'm not interested. You know, like, this is stupid. <laughs> but then I was thinking, okay, now he thinks that I'm bad at crossword puzzling. So he got that really cocky, you know. And then <laughs> the competition started. And I recalled so many of those uh, squares, you know, what's, uh, you know how it is, have you ever tried puzzling the same crossword puzzle twice? You, it's just a memory thing. So uh, I was solving this puzzle with the light of speed, I'm telling you, I was so fast at it that this random guy who was eating his uh, burger next to us, I think he was like, back then I thought he was like 60 years old, so he probably only was 40, you know. <laughs> but he was, you know, moving closer and closer into uh, my space area because the guys who were making the burgers, they heard our... Um, it's a called competition. They heard that we wanted to do this. So they were also watching and one of the guys making the burgers, he was like, oh dude, she's really good, man. You're getting your ass kicked. And then someone said something about, someone should check if she's just putting in random, you know, if I was just putting in random the uh, letters, but if I, or if I actually was solving the, the puzzle, so this guy, this strange man, you know, the one that I thought was about 60 years old or something, he suddenly became the referee of our puzzle quest by uh, checking uh, what I was writing. And he was so impressed. He was like, oh man, you're good. You're like a genius. That's a difficult one, you know. And I was just solving this puzzle by the speed of the light and won myself a burger meal. So... Yeah, and I never ever told anyone that I was cheating because, you know, I just <laughs> kept that to myself. <laughs> so, so yeah, I uh, have been uh, puzzling a lot, you know, solving a lot of uh, crossword puzzles and found it very, very enjoyable.
it's just fun to think about, you know, how he really thought that he was going to win a, a burger meal from my hand and then got his ass totally whooped. <laughs> just brings joy. <laughs> Um, I should give some splatter in the maybe warm sienna with some burnt sienna. It's just like I'm gonna do it with. Can I do it with this hand? Yes. at doing splattering today. I can't really whip my hand as I'm used to because of my... Oh my god, that was a lot. It's okay. I want to grunge it up because I want to keep that loose impression of um, a very loose and quick painting. And then at the same time, I don't want the, it to be like so splatter splatter looking. So I'm just dissolving the the round specks. Now I want to have like less water on my brush to get more of a deep purple here. But now I don't puzzle as much as I used to because I can't stop cheating. I can't stop looking up the answer on the internet. Um, back when I was younger and, and we didn't have internet, you had to like puzzle your your you know, the, the things that you didn't know what the answer was, you had to puzzle your way to, to solve it. But today with the internet, it's just so tempting to look up that name, you know, especially if it's one of those puzzles with names, like what's, who's the actor who did this and that, you know, <laughs> it's so easy to look it up. So, uh, yeah. But I still find it to be a, a time well spent. I, I really like, you know, solving the whole puzzle, and it annoys me if I if I have like empty uh, words or squares that are not filled out <laughs> because I'm so stubborn, you know. Oh, I need to work in some sort of window or something on this barn. Hmm. Should do them in dark purple. Do I want them? Got a ruler here that I'm scratching with. I'm working on wood pulp paper, not the best, but it will 
get the job done, you know. <laughs> Probably perfect for this squash wannabe kind of paint. Squash is not typically a mover, so it's not like it's a runner, you know, like spreading out, fanning out on the on the page. It pretty much stays put where you place it. So when I'm using gouache, I like wood wood pulp paper because I feel that more expensive paper is sort of a waste because expensive paper you are after the quality where the surface tension allow the pigment to stay longer on the top of the paper so that you can make your paint move I think I want the roof to go like this. I'm still sitting out in my beach barn. My computer is not yet moved. And I'm not in a hurry. I really like it out here. I was a little bit oh, sad. <laughs> I had to, you know, follow hubby's advice and move room for the winter. Because I really, really love this, um, this, this place where I'm at right now. Because of the bright windows and the light and... It's just like really, really a nice room, really likable room. But um, yeah, as soon as we get, we're waiting for a special um, cable to uh, make sure that I can get internet in the other room. As soon as we get that, we are moving my computer. Um, let's put in some trees. I really like that dark almost like dirty umber let's see what we can get if we mix it with blue and then some yellow Oh my god, I can't believe that I haven't tried out a Bob Ross tutorial yet. Can you guys believe that? I mean, I am so fond of painting <laughs> from tutorials, so it's unbelievable that I haven't been uh, visiting Bob Ross at all. So I think uh, when, when I get situated in my uh, new room, the first thing I'm going to try out is a Bob Ross tutorial if the hands allow it I can just see how that room is perfect for sit setting up a big easel and light and um, just very very likable space for painting with oils also like a a lot of options with small tables to uh, put down supplies and your palette in a way so that the cat cannot jump up like when I'm painting on this table right here there's always a risk when I'm make working with oils that the cat one of the cat can like jump up and land with their paws on the, my palette. So, 
Wow, this is like really nice painting session. I hope that I'm not too boring to listen to. I hope that you guys are having like your own journal in front of you and then just hanging out with me. <laughs> oh my god, did anyone see Aunt Beck's latest uh, upload where she has to assemble some quilt blocks on the floor? <laughs> Drag me up. Her cat was like really, <laughs> really spunky that day. <laughs> It, she, the cat was, uh, you know, running across the the room and uh, making it so difficult for her to lay out her ten quilt blocks on the floor. And she wanted to lay them out because that's what you do when you're quilting. You, you need to assemble the blocks and change them around to where you want them to be sewed together. So you, you actually need that kind of very concentrated 10 minutes <laughs> where you have to decide the design of your quilt so she was like totally distracted constantly by this cat running on top of her blocks mix mix and mingling the blocks together <laughs> and then she apparently got free kids cats free kids i don't know she might have kids <laughs> But yeah, definitely have three, three cats, three of them. Why can I say the word? <laughs> and she start kicking out the one that was like uh, causing her, uh, you know, issues, and then the second one took up the shenanigan and <laughs> started. So oh, it was so funny. So, <coughs> I mixed up some more with that deck white mixed with red. I really find it difficult to squeeze out of the tube, so I may need to have the tube out on my desk to remind me about using it before it totally stiffen up. This is like a really nice, relaxed tutorial to follow. I love um, the way that Shibasaki, he's got like um very loose style. You can really learn a lot from following tutorials where it doesn't have to be so tight, you know, so neat or, yeah, tight is a good word. like like room for diversity of the outcome. Some of the watercolor tutorials that I have followed, oh my god, the ones from Mind of Watercolor Steve, he is so talented. <laughs> I cannot replicate any of his stuff. And it, it kind of gets a little bit annoying because um, most of the time he's got like real painting sessions but sometimes it's like a time lapse where you know you're not so sure how did he get that effect how did he jump from this to this and it's not that noticeable when you're watching um, the stream before you start to paint but it comes becomes visual when you start following the tutorial because then you really noticed all the steps where um, he just added something you know <laughs> it just changed 
and and you didn't see him make the 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 paint session if it makes any sense Maybe I should get a little bit brown in front of that doorstep here. <coughs> okay. Now I have to mix up quite a big amount of let's first fix this tree here now we come to a a tree that's going to stand behind this barn and it's going to of course be dressed up in autumn colors exciting orange it's going to be like uh, half naked because of the leaves are already leaving the the tree for this season so what Shibasaki does in his tutorial is that he takes a piece of paper tissue um, crumbles it up and then just paint with that and that's that move he did right there was the whole reason for me wanting to paint especially this tutorial because that looks like a bag of fun <laughs> wait I'm struggling a little bit with the the values of these trees right here I want some something darker You know how it is. <laughs> Your eye is just locked on something and you want to fix it before you move on. Okay, maybe I should just leave it. So, let me mix up some yellow kind of a little bit dirty burnt sienna inside of it maybe it's enough with just the ochre a little bit of red and orange up here piece of pepper crumpled together And with this technique, you don't know what, is it like a hidden list? <laughs> I just try and um, stop and crumble up the paper on the go, so you will get not like the same stamp, but like a, a different surface. And now for something like really red over here. A fun way of painting.
let's just put in a, you know my favorite color is red <laughs> let's just put in an obscene amount of this red and then And stamp yellow on top of that. And just simply let the watercolor do its thing with whatever mixes it want to get. Okay, stop now, Lena. <laughs> That's a tree. Back to a ruler. See if I can scratch in some sort of branches. Branches. Oh my god. Do you think my arthritis went to my brain today or my lips? Like, I can't really express myself today. This would be like the perfect day to record a new message on my answering machine to my phone <laughs> short and correct never gonna happen I really like the way that this ruler is giving these um, just uh, this line work thing you know so let me mix up some really dark and see if I can, by the end of the ruler, oh, that was like too much, but the, the ground idea was uh, okay, still working. You probably would get a much nicer job done with a pen if you had like a sepia colored ink pen. the prettiest sight now for something purple to give the dark contrast on the tree such a nice choice I actually rarely use purple in autumn trees. That's so likable when you're doing tutorials. You get inspiration to try something off your regular habit and comfort zone. Oh, this really is a very relaxing painting to do.
dislike that the yellow pan is totally loose in this uh, palette. It waffles around. I think I need to secure it with some double sided tape or something. The making of this palette is a little bit crazy. The reason why the yellow is loose and not attached is because there is this overhanging lip on the pan and the, the lip overhang starts over here so when you have to change the, the way these are placed you push them to this end here so you can lift them but you will break them if you force them further so you have to like um, Scoot them over here where there, there's no overhanging lip so we can take them out. So that's why this one is not attached at all. <laughs> it's a very unusual setup. So it's one of those that you kind of, you know, break if you don't know. <laughs> You're most likely to... Um, stuffing and then just break it off I want more of these just totally naked branches oh, that was a little bit too too much Now for some shadow. I'm just making a muddy dark from the burnt sienna and the ultramarine that I got in my palette. Let's see, where do we want? Do we want the house to cast a shadow? Like here, like Shibasaki does. It's raining outside today. I don't know if you can hear it on my stream. It's such a calm, pleasant sound okay we also got shadow on the other side here I think um Let's mix up some purple in this one. Something like really dark. Yeah. 
and then we actually got a fence um, I'm mixing up black with uh, burnt sienna to uh, get in the fence let's see I'm just letting them um, kind of blur out to begin with. But isn't this just a fun painting when you have to do shadows like this, you know, where you put in the, the fence? I love effects like that. I'm gonna let that dry up a little bit before I come in with a darker uh, value for the fence. Now I'm totally quiet. <laughs> I'm really enjoying this. Just nice and easy. It was exactly what I needed. You know, uh, on a day like this. I get restless when I can't paint because of my fingers. I look at all my supplies and get restless. Like, um... I really have to accept uh, that there are just things and days but there are stuff that I should uh, let go and then not do so I got really annoyed because I couldn't paint with markers today but there is always tomorrow right it's also like super classic, like you want to participate in some sort of a, um, what's it called, like a monthly thing, like Inktober is, and then something comes up, like something <laughs> comes up so that you are not able to follow your own schedule and that's just uh, lame because there is no um, like due date or something it's just you and yourself in your art room so if it takes you two months to complete a complete 30 ink sketches for Inktober then so be it I also think that Mary Atelier uh, worked like that, like she participate but promise herself that if she takes longer 
then that's okay, you know. She does have to push herself. Start singing outside. Maybe an indicator that the rain is about to stop. Now I'm just filling out the background more. I'm really tempted to <laughs> do something over here with that paper because that was so funny. Let me try with this green and then hopefully get something, maybe more. I take Prussian blue and then the dark green in the set and then a little bit of this earthy umber black I just want a muted distant cooler color so that's why I picked the Prussian and not the ultramarine because the Prussian is more cool than the warm ultramarine in this palette So I can get some I think I need to blur up the shadow, they are too sharp. And maybe I even need to get a darker, some sort of darker This is perfect. A little bit more muddy. Yeah. Yeah, that's juicy. <laughs> Like a like a bomb. Yeah, this was totally a fun tutorial. Very relaxed. I'm happy that I did it. Better do this than not be creative at all. <laughs> I think I would call it done. I just want to do some splatters over here. Would it ruin it? Oh. In a way, yes. So let me just, maybe actually on the, the pathway here, I could have some splatter. I can't even aim for it.
And if you are in doubt, punish it with your ruler. Make some line works. Kind of grungy it up a little bit. I like it. Nice tutorial to work with. So I would say that it's finished. <laughs> Thanks for watching if you uh, hold on this far. And today we were using the pretty odd, chunky, big <laughs> palette from uh, Pelican. It's a German brand. I think it reminds a lot of people in the US about the Grumbaga. So, yeah, nice paint. Have a nice week. Bye bye.